Today's show brought to you in part by GoToMeeting. For a free 30-day trial, use code podcast at gotomeeting.com. Today's uh, trending RV topics. Lots of good stuff going on in the world of social media. Of course, you can find us on Facebook, Twitter, Google Plus, and Pinterest. Andy, some fun things going on for Friday. Uh, let's see. Let me get to my notes so I don't completely stumble over myself. Now, I have to admit that yesterday I worked from home, and the Travelettes actually posted this, and I had this on the entire day. I'm going to bring up my. Can you hear that? You're hearing the youth stream too, but. Oh, it's the Woodland Sound. Yes. Does this improve your brain at the same time? What I think that? it. I think it did. I felt like I was working much better yesterday. Okay. And uh, I love this kind of stuff. So here, here's an actual site where you could. It's called forestmood.com. It did put me in a better mood. I mean, the sun was shining yesterday, but this was just nice. And I know there's a lot of apps for your phone and things as well too. But sometimes you can't always have those on at work. So if you have this, plug your headphones in and uh, you know chug away. So great forest noises. Um, I just thought that was kind of fun. A way to to decompress after the week. It's Friday. I think all of us need a little refresher. Uh, so check that out. That's in our show notes. Something I retweeted from Land Lopers. Uh, you know, maybe Delbert and Linda can relate to this. Sometimes... I think in this transition to maybe even part-time or full-timing or as Delbert and Linda do, they, uh, you know, go for an extended, you know, six, four to six weeks, you kind of still consider your trip as vacation and you forget to take the, uh, proper steps as far as health goes. Uh. Um, so this is an article from Landlopers and this is, uh, five ways to be an unhealthy traveler, uh, Obviously, you don't want to be an unhealthy travel traveler. Uh, the first point he makes is just taking the the proper precautions, and I know that Linda can probably, uh, you know, attest to that. Taking the proper precautions uh, to to not get sick or to prepare yourself, and maybe just start exercising a little bit before you go. And if you're getting into a different climate, maybe you know, obviously sometimes you can't acclimate yourself, but just getting your body prepared for what's going to be going on. I think sometimes when you're going for longer extended periods of time you almost consider that still a vacation but then really it is life mm -hmm. it's life at that mm -hmm. point uh this one is not applicable to uh our viewers. however uh number two says eat tons of air for food but you know what just stocking your rv with the junk that you don't want uh that's probably equally as as bad yeah, so it could be yeah as yeah. we talk with sylvia of rv health you know stock it with what's good all right forget to exercise uh you get out of your routine what happens, mm -hmm. Andy? You and I both know this. It, you and I are pretty yeah, suckers. It's very, <laughs> very, very stressful um, when you when you get out uh, out of your routine and uh, forget to exercise. Uh, it, it will it will get you. It'll get you in the back uh, if nowhere else. Exactly. Now this may not be applied to everyone, but you know what? You're on vacation. Sometimes you'll you'll grab a beer or a glass of wine or a margarita instead of a water. Cause hey, I'm on vacation. Uh, not vacation after two weeks, I say. This is something you need to incorporate in your lifestyle. Grab the water, grab the juice, grab the tea, something healthy, and no sleep. Uh, if you are changing time zones, this is a problem. We experience this in Las Vegas for CES. This sleep could it, it literally, I you know, I don't want to be morbid, but it's going to kill you if you don't get enough sleep and you don't do it right. So while you're on vacation or while you're RVing, whether you're part-time or full-time, remember to get your rest. And uh, you know what? The RVing lifestyle is fantastic and it does seem like vacation, but we need to to prepare ourselves to act like it's every day and eat well and still exercise and still incorporate those things that you would at home. And I know a lot of full-timers are probably pretty much in the swing of that, but when you're part-timing, especially coming up this summer, remember to do those everyday little things that you do at home. All right. So something I posted on Facebook is five phyto-friendly getaways. And uh, I posted this on Facebook this morning and I had a few comments. Uh, one of those being from the winds, the winds have cats. And not only do they have cats, but they have cats so they walk on a leash. Uh. So they said, do our cats, you know, are they in this category? I said, well, of course. You walk your cat. So five Fido-friendly getaways. Uh, they talk about the accessibility, the, the paths, the parks, all those things that they incorporate into what makes a Fido friendly city. Uh, Outer Banks, North Carolina. Andy, have you been? A absolutely. Yes, yes. And uh, uh, the uh, center of which is Duck, or at least the northern part. Yes. <laughs> Edisto Island is it's a great place. Outer ba Banks. I went, I went there when I was younger. Mm -hmm. All right. So other ones we have here are um, Las Vegas, which actually a little surprised, but 
Okay. Las Vegas, Nevada. Half, Mi Half Moon Bay, California. Very Fido friendly. Lake Placid, New York. And Boston, Massachusetts. So they've got the Freedom Trail that offers a perfect way for your dog to participate in your family sightseeing adventures. So uh, obviously we talk about it over and over and over again. So many of you RV with your dogs. Check out that. That'll be in the show notes. Uh, maybe planning your vacation or if you're going near or around those areas. They're Fido friendly. All right. So Andy, I know, I know you're tired today because you went to the midnight showing of Hunger Games. You know, I resisted. I said, nope, I've got to go in Friday. I need a clear head. I need sleep. We've got a lot right, to do. But right. Andy went out midnight, got home at three, and now he's just dragging today. Uh, okay, we kid. We he didn't go. I didn't go. Uh, but Hunger Games, huge, huge, huge movie that came out this weekend. Andy, I have it on audiobook. I have to confess, haven't audiobooked it. I uh, haven't listened to it. I have. Read the book, but I do know that people are crazy about it, and it's so crazy that North Carolina is uh, kind of crossing fingers that it increases tourism uh, oh. because some of the book or the movie was shot in North Carolina in the specific city. So, I've got an, a Hunger Games four day itinerary now for those of you that are. Are, uh, you know, I don't know if freak is the right word, but let's just go ahead and use it. If you are a Hunger Games enthusiast, game enthusiast yes. uh, here is your four-day itinerary if you decide to go to North Carolina. Uh, day one, I can't, I, you know, I don't even, I, I feel bad reading this because I'm not completely Starting engaged. Starting out in, in Charlotte. This. Yep, you're going to start in Charlotte. Mm -hmm. uh, you're going to go through, let's see, DuPont State Recreational Forest. And day three, you're going to go through, actually, the heart of District 12. I do know that, that that's part of the book and the movie. And then day four, you're going to explore the capital, which is Charlotte. Mm. The capital in the book is where they reside, I believe, or where they fight. And, and I right? think I, it's one of these things that this has the potential of uh, becoming a, almost like Star Wars in that people uh, really begin to get into the end of the game and uh, or in, into the, so into the movie that they, they really want to extend that uh, in into their real life. And yep. so it looks like uh, North Carolina has done a great job here. Absolutely. And, you know, Andy, Twilight, again, one of Andy's favorites. Uh, <laughs> you know, Forks, uh -huh. <laughs> yeah, I believe it's Forks, Washington yeah. uh, is where that, that movie was actually the books were written in f about Forks. Uh, the movie was obviously went along with the book, and Forks has really raked in some tourism dollars because of that movie. So I believe that you know Charlotte is also hoping for that. You know what, Andy? I'm just gonna go ahead and say this: you're probably gonna be fine. I think you're gonna mm. get the tourism dollars. That movie. I mean, people were just going nuts. So, anyways, check that out. That'll be in our show notes as well. Pinterest, Andy, again, you just do these things behind my back. You show me up. Uh, this first one is uh, posted to our Tales from the Road board. This is an underwater view of a dog jumping in there. So, I know a lot of you on vacation get that dog... Uh, Cool him down, and he just jumps this, in. This, this is what is, this see. is the most <laughs> interesting series. The one to the left, I, I I call Dog Shark, and I thought that that would be the one that would be most popular. But it's actually this this guy on. <laughs> you know, there's the dog shark as he's uh, going after the ball in the water. But uh, the other one just seemed to have this uh, kind of Zen-like uh, uh, sense of what's going on, and uh, <laughs> he just is having a great time. And uh, and this artist. Uh, if you click on that, it'll lead you to the page where the yeah. artist has other uh, photographs that they had. And what a creative way to uh, to capture just beautiful, beautiful pictures. Look at the tennis ball one. Oh, that's funny. Yeah. That's funny. So that's on our Tales from the Road board. Of course, Tales from the Road is our pet uh, travel show. Okay, so Andy, this one uh, woke up this morning. My email was jam-packed. You know, I think you do this just to taunt me because you know I'm getting the emails for this. Uh, this is Yellowstone, the Great Geyser Fountain. And this is a fantastic picture. It's absolutely gorgeous. Uh, this has gotten repinned um, more more times than I would care to count at this point. Right. A little and frustrated. It, and it's coming, of course, from uh, uh, Geocaching World and, yes. yep. uh, and Geocache Radar. Uh, because uh, geocaches, a lot of them, there are millions of these things uh, around the country. But uh, oftentimes they are in areas that uh, have a lot of natural beauty and a lot of attractions uh, in, in, uh, available. Uh, in the area. So it all just kind of kind of goes together. Absolutely. All right. So here's my time to pin. Of course, it's not going to do as well as Andy. Da, no, da, no. I know this. I know this. Actually, uh, I'm, what am I doing here? Yeah, Pinterest. that's the right way. Okay. So anyways, uh, I did pin this and I'm just bringing up the website actually. And what I pinned was a, a camp. It's a birthday party. 
it's a camping themed birthday party. Let me spit it out there correctly. So really, really cool ideas. You know, um, it'd be great to take all your kiddos for, and their friends out on camping, but this is a much easier, this probably much more sane. Camping. Yeah, yeah, backyard camping. You know, if you can't take all your uh kids friends in the rv this is kind of a fun way to bring that experience to a party and just kind of a diy things and creative ways to do that some really fun they've got little canteens there they've got great little snacks they've got uh sewn little uh eggs and bacon and a compass and all kinds of really cool stuff. They've got camping bingo. Uh, they've got grub in a bag for kind of a, a take-home gift. And then, of course, the snacks for the party itself are trail mix, bug juice, uh, all the, the normal camping necessities. It looks like uh, some more cupcakes. Is this fun or what? No, I mean, this is pretty cool. It, it is. And I think the other thing is if you had uh, daughters or granddaughters that were this age, this could be a, a, a really fun activity for the family. And they've, and they, yeah, absolutely. And they've got a, the screen projection out there to kind of watch a movie at night. And, of course, that backyard, uh, great the backyard camp out, the national uh, event is coming up in June. And so that kind of might be a good way to do that as well maybe throw a little party and have that uh going on so i think that wraps it up for our trending rv portion of today's show of course you can send me an email at cw at rvnn.tv you can find me on twitter at cordy pants and andy i haven't told you this but if you have an idea or a topic that you want to talk about on our trending rv uh go ahead and just hashtag trending rv on twitter and uh, we'd like to get a little hashtag action going there so uh that's all for today i guess right oh, Hey Gabe, wanna go for a walk? Gabe? 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 But are you lost? Hold on. If your pet is the adventuresome type, be sure he's connected to Pet Hub. A quick scan using any smartphone shares your pet's vital information so that even his wildest escapades have a happy ending. Pet Hub, reuniting pets with their families. Come on, Gabe, let's go home.